Guys, I honestly don't even know what to say right now. I really consider just not making a post-game video and acting like this whole thing never happened. But I can't be like that. I didn't want to make a video after the Thunder loss, and that was a bad, bad loss. But for some reason, this one stings even more. And it's because the Bulls were on the other end of this one. They were behind big. They had a terrible second quarter. And the second half of the third quarter, they really came alive, fought back, played very, very smart team basketball. And then that happened. Bulls up five with 11 seconds to go. 11 seconds to go. And Lillard jacks up a Hail Mary from the logo. They somehow get a ridiculous jump ball call. They get the ball back and Lillard hits another three. Just like that, the game is over. This was the type of win the Bulls really needed for their confidence after losing two straight games and learning the news that their starting center would be out for an extensive period of time. And this was just a brutal blow to close out the month of January, a, a month that was a very hard schedule for the Bulls, yet another winnable game this one was that they just could not close out. The thing about this game was the Bulls actually played well down the stretch and in the clutch. Obviously. They had a bad first half given they fell behind by so many points, but to come back in the way that they did. And what was different about the end of this game was that, from what we haven't seen from the Bulls so far this season, was that they actually made smart plays in the clutch. Now, I know it doesn't seem like it because how do you blow a five point lead with 11 seconds left? But let me explain. When the Bulls took the lead late in the game with less than two minutes left to go, they remained calm and collected, both on offense and on defense. They utilized the clock appropriately by killing time down on the shot clock and making a play with less than eight seconds left on the clock, which is what you should be doing when you're ahead in a game that late. Uh, there was really only one ill-advised three by Levine that he missed badly when the Bulls were up. Um, I believe it was two points. Um, and he didn't take any time off the shot clock. However, he regrouped in the following play. He killed virtually the entire shot clock. He passed the ball, made a nice cut to get open again, and drove to the basket, scoring an efficient shot. And that's what I want to see from Levine. I want to see him driving to the hoop more at the end of the game, trying to draw contact, taking better shots that are much are going to be a lot easier to actually knock down rather than putting up a contested three. He then also had another clutch three with around 30 seconds left which he hit with five seconds left on the shot clock again all about killing time when you're that late into the game and then when the bulls with 16 seconds left they're up three they inbounded the ball to kobe white he found himself open for a wide driving layup to the hoop and rather than scoring he dribbled the ball to kill more time and wait for him to be fouled. I mean, these are all smart, very self-aware plays by a young team that previously was just horrible in their decision-making down the stretch. Kobe hits both free throws, the Bulls go up five, and then we all know what happened from there. I don't need to reiterate that any more than we have to. And I hate to sound like Paul George because I am absolutely not a Paul George fan, but the shots from Damian Lillard those are not good shots. I know he hits those all the time. He's got great range. Uh, but to jack up a three from the logo with a man right in your face. I mean, it's obviously an incredible shot. And Lillard is a stud. But for the Bulls, there's nothing you can do there. There's really nothing you can do about Damian, Damian Lillard taking a shot like that. And then the jump ball, again, a questionable call. But the jump ball doesn't go their way. A bit of a loose ball after the tip. Bulls couldn't corral it. Lillard throws up another three and he hits it. That's why I can't really blame the Bulls for this one because they did what they needed to do down the stretch. I mean, sure, you could say where was the help for Levine when he was getting trapped or why didn't they call a timeout or why didn't Levine try to pass it? But come on, he held it for a reason. He didn't even hold it for that long, thinking he was for sure going to get fouled. It was the right thing to do. And how do you defend Lillard when he's in that mode? You just can't. So if there are any positives from this game, because I know as Bulls fans, it's hard to find something positive after such a devastating loss like this. But the way I look at it is the Bulls played really well in getting back into this game after looking all but down and out. Uh, they played smart, they were efficient on offense, 
and they actually did decently well in not turning the ball over. I mean, relatively speaking, because the Bulls have had issues turning the ball over all year, but only 15 turnovers for them in total. And Zach Levine, I know he had six turnovers tonight, but he's clearly improving his decision making on the court. His basketball IQ has gotten significantly better with every passing game since that Thunder loss. He had 26 points tonight on incredible shooting numbers, 9 for 12, 6 for 8 from 3, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 steals. And Markinen had a great game. 31 points, 6 rebounds, shooting 12 for 18, and 6 for 11 from 3. I mean, if you look at the stat sheet for the team as a whole, shooting 50.6% from the field, 46.7% from 3, 31 assists to 15 turnovers, and they were perfect from the line. And then you also have Kobe White. He himself had a nice game after being in that slump for the past week or so. 20 points, 6 for 11 shooting, and 6 assists. He looked much better out there in terms of his court vision and taking smarter shots, not something we had seen previously. So yes, I know this loss is painful. I mean, it's losses like these where you almost just want to throw your hands up in the air and say, I'm done being a Bulls fan. But despite the ridiculous heroics from Lillard at the end of the game, and of course the bad second quarter from the Bulls. The Bulls actually played a solid game and for not having their starting center, and yes, I know, I know, the Blazers were also shorthanded tonight as well without McCollum and Nurkic and a few other guys. But what we should be happy in seeing most is that some of the decision making from these younger guys is improving slowly but surely. They're maturing and moving the ball better, taking smarter shots and playing team basketball. Anyway guys, I know it's a short recap, but I'm obviously not in the best of moods after a loss like that. And like I said, what else is there really to say when you see an ending like that? There isn't really a lot you can do when Lillard is playing in the clutch in that fashion. We've seen it multiple times from him throughout his career. The Bulls will start their February schedule by kicking it off against the Knicks on Monday. I'll be back tomorrow for a preview of the upcoming week. Thanks again for tuning in guys. Hang in there and I will catch you in the next one.